Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Nell. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. You're in for such a good treat because today is my favorite of all favorites. This is What's in Bloom, which is where I get to show you guys and share some of the blooms that I have in my greenhouses. And I gotta tell you, today I'm not gonna do a lot of talking. I'm gonna get right into it because there is so, so much, so much to show. And I don't want to forget anything. Actually, I just released um, my my haul and I forgot two really important purchases that I made at Lady Vanda and one at Jim and I. So I'll be including that in this video. So without further ado, let's go look at some blooms. All right, guys, we're going to start where we usually start right here in my terrace greenhouse. And I am going to try to be very strategic because I don't want to miss anything. So fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be a long episode, but you guys do request it. So upon your request, here we go. This is a beautiful, beautiful orchid. I am so happy that she is blooming right now because I got to tell you every year, it gives me more and more. Now, I've had this one for quite, quite a while. Here, let me show you. This is, uh, I'm proud to say I'm tagging everything. So that's the name of this one. And I did put this on the, the pot this way. I actually stole the idea from Teresita. <laughs> she, I believe she did uh, one of her orchids like this. And I was wondering, this one kept on falling out of its pot and I realized that it was telling me it wanted to be hung and mounted. So look at the colors of these flowers, guys. Is that not a beautiful, beautiful tone? And this flower, first of all, has a great scent. Let me see. Not yet. It's kind of early in the morning. All the animals, as you can hear, are going crazy. Early morning, the dogs, the birds, everything is singing out loud. But um, this one has an amazing amazing fragrance that it releases around 10 11 o'clock in the morning it'll start releasing that beautiful fragrance and i i did just water all my orchids uh, it rained a lot yesterday but i need i need to water them every day in the summer because it gets very very hot now right next to it is this gorgeous satan fidania mitrata it took me about a year to learn how to say that name <laughs> and this baby always gives blooms yearly in its season without a miss now this year gave me four spikes but she has uh, given me in the past up to eight spikes but she is a heavy bloomer she'll last for quite a while I was hoping to get to this before the flowers start fading but look flowers seem to be super 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 crisp and it's been already two weeks now let me see if I have the name oh, I don't have the tag but I will put it underneath and this is one of the very first um, of its kind that I bought I do have other um, the whites and the yellows but this one is just absolutely gorgeous she is always always surprising me very pretty flowers and she is very fragrant by the way very strong fragrance and this is known as the more uh, common one the one that you see mostly but there are a variety of colors Ooh, I can smell the fragrance now here is this bold yellow that I purchased a long time ago at Ophi's I had no idea what it was it seems to be a hybrid it's a Grammata phyllocymbidium uh, hybrid, Nathan Newman. And it is not fragrant, but man, is this a pretty flower. Here, let me show you. It has to stop moving. And the flowers do last a very long time. Now, this orchid in particular, I've learned, because it has Grammata phyllum in it, it really doesn't enjoy a lot of water. So I keep her here where I, I don't have to water, or should I say, water doesn't fall to it as much as the other orchids because the leaves do start, see, yellowing when it gets too much water. So, like I said, you need to test with your orchids and if you kill them, it's okay. That's not a 
failure or an error, it's a lesson that you just learned and you realize that that's not what you should be doing. So I did learn with this beautiful orchid that she does not like too much water. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's turn right in here. This beauty surprised me as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I started talking and <clears throat> all of a sudden my throat itches. Now this, this Catlia, I believe I got at, at um, Carl Smith at an Ophi's fair. Now, a lot of these Catlias that I bought a while back, I wasn't too experienced with them. So what was happening was that I would um, water them too much and then the leaves would start getting kind of weird and wrinkled and gnarly. So I decided a while back, um, once I started working with the orchid supply store, uh, Ken, the owner, started sending me some incredible amounts uh, uh, to, work, uh, to work with. And I decided to put pretty much all my Cattleyas that I, the older Cattleyas on mounts. And unbeknownst to me, it worked and they are doing well. I mean, they have struggled, I'm not gonna lie, but look at these beautiful flowers. Or should I say flower? <laughs> it's just a sign of success. And the mosquitoes today are crazy, but I do have Skin So Soft, which I gotta tell you guys, I'm not sponsored by them, but boy, I don't mind talking about it because it is the, it is the best um, mosquito repellent there is. Besides, I don't like to put chemicals on my body and, and Skin So Soft seems to be a lot less uh, damaging to your body. Now, this beautiful Paphiopetalum that's given me about five, this one's still about to open, five flowers, I've yet to tag. I bought this at Ophi's a long time ago, I would say about four, maybe five years ago. And unfortunately, I don't have, let me see if I can, come on iPhone, focus on the hand now. <laughs> it's funny how I talk to this phone as if it, see, it will not, I'm tapping that screen like a madman. Oh my God, the struggle. So this flower i've been trying to get it um identified but i can't seem to uh, find it anywhere online i don't know if you i see a lot of a uh, lot of ones that look very similar but are not the same and i did ask some of my pro friends that are orchid growers and they're all having a little bit of trouble naming this i even asked julian uh, of crawl smith who is a dictionary and he has trouble with it so you know this is either rare or it was some hybrid that someone put together and never continued it or tagged it so for now we're just going to enjoy the beauty of this paphiopetalum and i've said before paphiopetalums do very well here these are all my paths as a matter of fact i have a mini that's very hard to bloom but check it out I got this over at spring water it's not blooming yet but i do want to share it because it's such an adorable little thing and as soon as it's open i will share it now i will skip some because i have already covered them in my previous what's in bloom i have way too many to include the ones that are already shown so this one i believe was in bud on the last what's in bloom and i did talk about this this is, I would say, my one of my favorite encyclias. I love the pink and, and greenish yellow. It's just a very pretty color tone combination. And I couldn't remember which one it was. I don't, I do not have a tag for this. So if you guys know what this is, again, I would appreciate your help. And I will ID it as soon as I get the correct identification but it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous little flower. And it has a minty fragrance. The fragrance of this flower is very minty. There we go. Oh, I love when the focus works. It just looks so pretty. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Now let's move on to this one. This little monkey here, I got this at the Tam, uh, no, not Tamami, Redland, um, international show about two years ago and i bought this from none other than rf orchids 
If you guys haven't seen uh, my video on RF, I encourage you to do so. It's a beautiful historical location. They've been doing uh, cultivating and um, crossing and naming orchids for many, many, many years. And this is one of their, uh, hold on, I'm looking for the tag. I know it's called Kent Spires, but I like to show the tag because here we go. See, and this is their information if you guys want to check them out. And that's the name, it's the Vanda Kent Spires. It has one of my favorite Vandas, Denisoniana, with a Vanda Samthiwal, I guess, th Samthawil. <laughs> oh, I don't know that. But anyway, I just call it what it's called, a Kent Spire. But look at the red on this, how pretty. And some of them, uh, when I bought this one, some of them had more yellow, some of them had more spots. This one, I was a surprise. It ends up being a lot redder, but I love this color. It is really, really pretty. Now, right behind it, check my Maxillaria tenifolia. This is what they call the coconut uh, smelling orchid. Some people call it the copper tan orchid. I've seen so many names for this. And uh, the coconut cream pie orchid, which really it does smell like coconut cream pie. And I believe that this is the one that they call the original. And I just found out this past weekend while at Pam's because she has the same one, but it's massively big. It's a little bit bigger than this. I mean, mine is pretty big already, but hers is slightly bigger than this one. It was a beautiful, beautiful specimen. And this one, believe it or not, guys, I did not put several together. I grew this one to this size. It was, it was a small one when I bought it. And luckily enough, I was able to grow it in this beautiful cone that I got over at Ban Young's Orchids. And she's just loving it in here. Look at that. And I can smell the coconut from here. It's just so delicious. Now, I hope I, I don't, you guys don't feel like I'm speeding everything up. It's just that I wanna show you as much as I can. I don't want to do part two or anything like that. I just want to show it all in one. Hold on, let me see. Because the lighting today, as you can see, it is very gray and sad. <laughs> and I think it's going to rain again. We're in that season. You know, April showers brings May flowers. Um, this is what they call a pyloric philanopsis. Pyloric just simply means that it mimics the labellum, the two... Um, I guess they're called petals or they do mimic. I wish I had another Philanopsis here to show you. Well, I'll show you in a Vanda. Um, they will imitate the labellum. Now this one is a heavy, I think they call heavy or full. No, this is a full, which all three look exactly the same. I call this my avatar orchid because just the colors of it are outstanding. Okay, let me see it. There we go point it towards the light it's a very very beautiful beautiful philanopsis and I did put it in this little pot that I bought over at Carl Smith a couple of years ago from a vendor I can't remember their names but I really love it and look it's just growing through the pot it loves it in there all right let's turn around and look at what we have up here this is one of my favorites. Now, over at Crawl Smith, they had the same one. And I was celebrating the one they had without realizing I actually own this. There's a lot of orchids here that I love. And I don't realize when I'm out there in the nurseries and I don't realize I actually own it. I own pretty much over 500 orchids. I don't know the exact amount, but I could safely say it's definitely over 500. And I wouldn't even be stretching it if I'm close to 600. Um, I have three um, green rooms already filled, so it's just growing and growing. Now these flowers, what I love is that bluish purple, it radiates. It has a really pretty halo around the, the leaf. And this is a Vanda Tessalata cross with a Sasicha. Hold on, let me see if I can get it to focus with one hand. There we go. And they do have a massive one at Crawl Smith. And I'm trying to grow mine. 
as big as theirs, but mine is only a third of that size. <laughs> it is a slow grower, but it does give me these beautiful flowers every year, and it is very fragrant. Now she's just starting to open. So um, the flowers are fresh, but it's definitely one to have in your collection. If you guys don't have this, this is definitely one. I, I ended up getting this at RF as well. They do sell this over there. Now, let me see how I do this because this one has been blooming for me constantly and I don't want to move her from up there because what happens is when I move certain things, the flowers break. But look at that gorgeous Catlia Shiliriata cross with Brassavola nudosa. Now, this is the second time she blooms in a month time and she is fragrant. There is a name. Let's see if I can spin this. And look at the lip or labellum on that flower. It just has that beautiful trademark of the Cattleya Shiliriana, which by the way, I mine is already on its way out. It's down to one flower, my Cattleya Shiliriana, but it gave me three beautiful blooms. I will put it here on the inset so you can see the difference um between this lip and that lip it actually made the cover to my what's my last what's in bloom and this is just a very pretty and again i put them on these wonderful mounts from the orchid supply store if you guys want your orchids to do really well and you keep them outside um i encourage you to put them on a mount if you're heavy if you water heavily like i do definitely put him outside oh look what I just noticed here's another one of those Catlias that I believe I got over at, at um, Carl Smith during an Ophi's event but look it's got a bud now I'm saying these have not bloomed in years and now that I have them on these mounts look how well they've taken to it they're establishing they're actually going onto the wall <laughs> And if you're gonna pull them off the wall, guys, make sure you wet the roots, saturate it with water, and slowly pull them out. You can do that when they're hung on trees as well. Now, let me go back here because I did talk about orchids that I see and I go crazy for and I don't realize that I actually have. This is one of them, this Encyclia. I featured it at JJ Unique's Orchids. They had it there as a, as a unique orchid and I almost bought it. I almost bought it and I didn't realize this was a gift from my buddy Lee of Lee's Orchid from Hawaii and he gifted me this last time I saw him at the Tamiami show and it's a Cordigera cross with a Randii Epi Rio Clarence now this one comes straight from Hawaii I know that Tong from Springwater also has these, but I gotta say, this is one big Encyclia flower. And I guess it's because of the Cordigera. Ooh, and I can, oh my God, the smell guys, this fragrance is just so, so good. <laughs> All right, let's turn it around and go back to where we, you know what, I wasn't gonna cover this, but I'll cover it again. It's such a pretty Encyclia since we're covering Encyclias. I'll do a very quick cover because I did cover her in the last, um, or him, in the last um, What's in Bloom. Hold on, let me see. Because I know this one does give me a hard time to focus for some reason. There we go. Look at that. Now this is called an Encyclia alada, And it is native to Honduras. And it has a delicious, delicious fragrance. And again, I put him on these mounts. My God, my neighbor's dog today, they're cutting the trees. He is like nonstop. <laughs> now here is my favorite of all favorites when it comes to Vandas in my greenhouse. And do you know, guys know why? Because this Ben fragrance is so, so strong right now the wind is is blowing and i can smell that sweet bergamot uh, fragrance now i had explained before that my partner was making a protein shake 
and he opened the can of vanilla, vanilla protein and I said, wait a minute, that, that smell reminds me of something and it's this. <laughs> oh man, you gotta bottle this. Somebody's gotta bottle this. And not only that, it's just such a pretty flower. So this is a Ben Fragrance, Vanda Ben Fragrance. Let me see if I have a, a tag, because I know I lost a tag on this. And I haven't tagged it, you know why? Because I know the name already. <laughs> Here we go, no. Vanda Ben Fragrance. Yeah, this will keep me from editing so much. Alrighty, let's go back here in this little hole. Look at my little ghost orchid, my Thai ghost orchid. She has given me four spikes this year. Now, I've had a lot of trouble getting them to spike. I don't know if it has a name on the back. Let me see. The actual name, Shinorcus, is it? Chino, Shilo, Shil, she. Loshista Parishii. I paid 50 for this. I bought this at um, Ben Young. And this one has done pretty well. She does give me flowers every year. But um, I bought three. One died. It did not do well. And then this one here, I'm going to show you. It's a different color. This is a. It's the same name. No. There it is, Lunifera. It always gives me these spikes and then they dry out. So this was a dud. This was $50 down the drain. <laughs> I've had it for a while and nothing, but this one is absolutely gorgeous. They're very, very cute flowers. Now when they get very big, it's actually a show because they'll give you 10, 15, 20 spikes and it just looks like a, a, a bride's bouquet. So for now, I'm super, super happy that it's giving me some flowers. And right above is my generous Liam Singh. It's always giving me flowers as well. This one, let me see. Let me see if I can get you the name here so that way I'm gonna make a new tag for this. So this Liam Singh, I also got this at Banyang. And this was handpicked by Ben himself, the owner. And look at all the spikes that it's given me in the past. It is a super, super generous, and on this side too, by the way. It is a super generous Vanda. So if you guys get your hands on a Liam Singh, you will not be disappointed. It will give you flowers upon flowers. Now back here, I don't have anything that's fresh. Oh, wait, right down here. Boom. <laughs> My gra gra uh, Grammatophyllum spec Spectrum Spectrum. <laughs> I'll put that one underneath. I don't have a tag for this. But I did get this at Mac Orchids. And look at what a beautiful, it looks like leopard, leopard spots. What a pretty, pretty flower. And it still has a long way to go. It has all these buds to open. Now, I have been spraying for thrips. You guys have asked me what I've been using my three in one. And I've been using seven, which you can get at any Home Depot or Lowe's. Spelled S E V I N, not like the number. And I mix a um, teaspoon to a gallon of that with a teaspoon of orthene and a teaspoon of permatrol. I add, it, I add a gallon of water and I spot spray it. I'll show you now when I pass by my spot sprayer so you can see what I use to spot spray my buds. And I, the reason I use a spot sprayer is because I don't want to get all those crazy um, chemicals everywhere. They are strong and toxic. So I, I rather just spot spray on the, on the actual spike to avoid any, um, any overspray. Now this one I got, I believe it was at Carl Smith. Yes, it was. Here's the tag. And look at how gorgeous that is.
Now this is the second spike it gives me in a month. The old one already dried out. I hope that this comes out clear <laughs> when I process it because um, it's kind of gray out today. But it is a pretty flower. Uh, let me see, there we go. And extremely fragrant. You guys would love this in your collection. And they are using this a lot with uh, Bangkok Sunset. They cross them and they create all these other beautiful um, hybrids. Now up here are my dancing ladies. These dancing ladies were not doing well at all as well. So this is my trick now. When something doesn't do well, I put it on a mount. And nine out of 10, it does great. Look how great this, these roots look. These are all new roots that are all attaching. And she is loving that mount. So is this one. And look at this beautiful spike. This one is a sherry baby. I think it's a sweet, sweet something. Sweet baby or something like that. It's the one that's extra fragrant. So when that's in bloom, I will show you. Oh, look, it just opened. This is Maxillaria tenifolia Jamada, which is the same as the one I showed you previously that was red, the coconut one, but this is in yellow. Now this one, I did get a bunch from Pam a long time ago. How beautiful that is. They're all starting to open. I get very happy when I see all the little buds coming out. And I did get four and um, I put him in a cone as well. And look how beautiful she's looking. I just, I did it because this one's already so big that I wanted this one to be at the same, um, pretty much the same size as the red one because I'm going to hang them together <clears throat> someday. All right. I think we're done in the greenhouse, in this greenhouse. Let's go. Now, I did show these in my hall, so I'm not going to repeat it. It would be a little bit redundant and we'll be wasting time. Now, real quick, let's go in here real quick. Now, these are the two that I forgot to mention. This is a Satan Fidania Matrata which you guys just saw, cross with a Lamalata. Now, this is a wonderful story. I'm gonna to try to be as quick as possible. I'll show you what the flower looks like in an inset as I'm telling you the story. Um, this is sold by my friends in uh, Thailand, Kanjarine uh, Greens. And they're new to our market here in, in the United States. They did fly down to Tamiami for the first time and I bought a, uh, well, I didn't buy, he gifted me a beautiful orchid. And I really, really kicked myself for not taking one of these. He's the only one I saw with this hybrid. And what I loved is the curly, long uh, leaves. And I think it's due to the fact that the Matrata has the long string bean leaves and the Lamalata has your regular Vanda leaves. So this is what you get. You get these curly uh, looking uh, C-shaped leaves. And so, <clears throat> sorry guys, um, the, the plant, it's a orchid itself, releases a beautiful, beautiful flower. And you can definitely see the Satan Fidania in the flower. But um, what happened was that I didn't get it. It was the last day of the show. And at the Flamingo Gardens, when I saw Lady Vanda, they bought a bunch of these from them to help them out because they didn't want to take so many back to Thailand. It is expensive when the international vendors come down here. So if you guys are at these international shows, you know, make sure that you give a little bit of love to them because they spent a lot of money to come here. And when they have to take so much back, they lose money. So um, Lady Vanda was so kind to take it off of their hands. And who ends up buying one? Moi. <laughs> so the orchid community, we all help each other. And that's what's really, really beautiful about it. And this is a fine example of that. And at, at the end of the day, you're, you're gifted this, well, not gifted. You are, you end up with a beautiful Vanda. Sorry, I'm trying to go so fast. I realize that the faster I try to go, the more I stumble with my words. And I usually don't stumble with my words that much, but today I am because I'm going too fast. 
Now this one is from Jim and I. I love them. They are so cool. Rachel is such a hoot. Every time I see her, I just feel like there's a party about to get started. <laughs> She's so much fun. And they had these uh, hanging. Now this is called the Vanda Jao Mullen, I think. And I will put a, fla um, a flower, a picture of this, which is a gorgeous yellow and pink. Um, now the owner, I can't remember his name. He's uh, Rachel's father. He um, was saying, you know, yellow and pink, it's a great combination. I couldn't agree with him more. I love that combo. That's why I was telling him that yellow and pink is the new black. <laughs> but I can't wait for that one to bloom again. It did bloom. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to film it for you guys. Um, but maybe next time. I showed this already in my, what, in my haul. But guys, let's just look at it one more time. This is the beautiful... I'm not Amy Glynn Creekmore. And I love that it has Redland on it because that's this, the area that I live in. <laughs> but if you want to see more of it, check out my, um, my latest haul. Now let's go into the little quick tank. We're on 25 minutes. We're doing great on time. I don't want to go over an hour. Let's open. Ah, I love being in here. It's such a nice feel. Now, here I wanted to show you this gorgeous Tempenzies. And I always wanted one. I think it's a Tempenzies. I don't know exactly what it is. It, it, it blooms like a Tempenzies. Uh, this is another one I shared with, Crawl, um, with Julian of Crawl Smith. And he really couldn't identify this one. So if you guys recognize this, this would be great to identify because it's really a gorgeous flower and it's abundant in blooms. And I love those tones, that little pink and yellow in the center. It's just awesome. Now, another one that I decided to put on a mount. And let me tell you, Philonopsis, they normally don't like to be on mounts. I've had several of them that struggle, but this one seems to really, really like it. And it's very well established. She's taken on to that piece of wood and immediately see that these are the old leaves. They kind of stayed that yellow, but the new leaves look really good. And as I said before, if you're new to my channel, this is calcium from the water. You can literally just rub it right off now let me see something I haven't shown you in here I love this little cookie this is my cookie flower I got this at Equajenera now remember what I said about Ben fragrance it has that vanilla bergamot smell this one has it but times 10 the only thing is it doesn't release it like Ben fragrance you have to get up to it but once you get up to it is very strong and this is the flower that I said reminds me exactly of the Danish cookies that come in the blue tin can, the sugar butter or butter sugar cookies. This smells exactly like that. Like when you open the lid, I will go to my grandmother's house. She always had one of those uh, cookie cans somewhere around the, the kitchen. And when you open that, it's just that fragrance of butter and sugar. And that's exactly what this smells like. And she always shoots out one or two little um flowers and i only paid 20 bucks for this about two three years ago all right i don't think i have much here besides my philonopsis which i have shown before we're not going to go through all of them because this one just opened and i really do love this this bow it just has a very unique labellum and i got this at ms orchids here in redland florida and if you guys want any fowls, that is one place to visit. They are really, really packed with orchids. And another wonderful place is a heavily garden. Check this out. I had to put her here because she is so big. This is my biggest Philonopsis. Look at the leaves. 
and the flowers bloom for months on end. This has been blooming now, I would say easily three, maybe four months. And it did shoot a new spike. So as you can see, the colors are a little bit more um, saturated. As they get older, it becomes more of a pastel color. So it is a beautiful, beautiful fowl. This one is um, identified. I just don't have the name. I lost a tag and I've been trying to tag it again, but unfortunately I can't find the name of this flower. So it's a, it's a working process. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go outside. Hey, Morris, how you doing, buddy? Really? You're that tired? How can you be that tired, Baba? Hold on, let me close my... Come on, Morris. You want to come with me? Let's do a walkabout. <laughs> He's so cute. He always loves to follow me here. He's like my little partner in crime. Right, boo-boo? There he goes. He will not lose sight of me. All right. Now, let's go to the Shamburkias, Miramirkofala. <laughs> I got this beautiful, beautiful Shamburkia at Crawl Smith about a year and a half ago. This thing has grown so much that I am, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just, I treat it the way I treat all my orchids, but it really, I decided to put it in a, in a pot only because when I have them hanging up I don't get to see them up close now this is a species this is called tibiana and it is such a beautiful beautiful color again there's that pink and yellow that I was talking about it is so pretty And look at all the spikes. Now this one I have been spraying a lot because one thing I've learned is thrips love shimberkias. And they do, they, they are pretty strong. It is a pretty strong flower and they do bloom for a very long time. But once thrips get, uh, get to them, it weakens them, it kills them. And you know, I have to constantly be spraying them until they start opening, then I know they're fine. Like I know already the buds are, are gonna open. But this is probably one of the most generous Shamburkias I have. Check the one next to it. I can't wait for this one to bloom. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how taller it's gonna get. Look at that. And this one I got at um, Santony, and it's probably the prettiest flower in, in the Shamburkias that I have. I mean, they're all gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but that one has a beautiful rainbows of reds and oranges and yellows. It's just, once it blooms, I'm going to definitely share. Now look what's happening in my little epidendrum area. They're all doing great. These, these were dying. I couldn't keep epidendrums, I didn't know why. And I decided to put them here. Now I do have to clean up. This grows, I cleaned this up literally not too long ago and it's already grown out. And Lewis has been doing heavy, heavy cleaning back here because this is where we bring all our branches and we burn them here in the city. We're in this area, since it's agricultural, we're allowed to burn uh, branches and leaves. Everybody has to do it because there's just too many trees in this area. And so all this is getting cleaned out, finally. So we're gonna stretch this out here. Let me see, let me give you a bigger. We're gonna stretch this greenhouse from here to probably right here to where the tree is so that way we get a little bit more space in there for everything that's growing now let's check this red dragon renanthera out guys this is probably i would say the most intense red in a flower and maybe that's why they call it the red dragon and there's no Photoshop in this, there's no enhancing. This is the true color of this flower. It is a vibrant electric red. If you can get your hands on a Renanthra, a Red Dragon Renanthra, please do. Because 
they give one of the most beautiful, beautiful red because they are they are skinny flowers, so iPhone doesn't recognize it. <laughs> there we go. It's gorgeous. And it has a very light, um, almost like tiger print. And this time around, it gave me two beautiful spikes. Now this, this Renanthera has been through the mill. It was one of the first ones I bought at the Redland uh, Orchid Show many years ago. And as you can see, it goes all the way down there, but it lost all those leaves. And then finally, when I put it here, it's doing great. And it blooms all the time. This is another one that I did spray for thrips because red buds seem to be very appealing to them. <laughs> What a pretty flower. I never get tired of seeing this. And underneath are all my other epidendrums that look so well in combination with that. Here's the red and yellow. And these are sun loving orchids for you newbies. If you want to put something out in the sun, I know that you guys have asked me before what's what's an orchid that will do good in the sun. These are the ones, epidendrums, and they have all kinds of colors, shapes, and sizes. Now I'm going to show you this one here, and I think we're going to close it up. Hold on, let me see. Wow, I. I re really didn't come to, uh, haven't seen this. I knew it was blooming because I saw it from far away, but man, these flowers are pretty big. Let's see if I can bring it down a little bit. There we go. Now this is an arachnus and, or spider orchid. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful orchid. I love <clears throat> the, um, the tones on it and that, hold on, oh my God, they're so hard to focus on these are not easy any any flower that's lanky like this the phone has a really tough time focusing because it wants to focus on the background but look at that look at those tones and on my last what's in bloom i think or the one before that one this this whole thing you see all those spikes was filled with so many flowers and I started with only a couple. I bought this at Udeli's and I decided to put it on this tree and I keep cutting them and putting them down here because once you cut them, this is what happens. They shoot right off the edge, um, right off the, the, the cane, they'll shoot another growth. And then from that growth, see, this one was cut here and look, it shoots another growth here so it's good to cut them back they do like it and they will bloom a lot for you once you cut them and it gives you these beautiful spray of flowers it's just absolutely gorgeous I'm telling you this is paradise when you have all these flowers blooming so I think that's it, guys. I did pretty good. I didn't. <laughs> he's sitting on top of the, I guess because the grass is wet and uh, he's sitting on top of the sprinkler cap. <laughs> Morris, is that a comfortable spot for you, Baba? Hmm? Is that comfortable? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, here, let me show you this one. This is what they call a Lori Mortimer, I think it is. I think that's what you call these. Uh, some people call it uh, rabbit pink or something like that. But this is a dendrome. It's on its way out. It was blooming um, for a while. But with all the winds and rains that we had here, unfortunately, it just didn't fare well. All right, guys, I think that's it. That's all I have to show you. 
All right, my friends, that is it for today. I wanted to keep it as short and brief as possible because I know a lot of you guys are busy and my long shows, they do very well, but I wanna give a little variety. I don't wanna make them all one hour long. So hopefully I kept this short, but interesting and, um, and full of information and blooms. So there's, uh, let me see, I'm always trying, I always like to close up letting you know what shows up ahead. I don't know of any shows uh, currently that are coming up, but I do know the Redland show. I did announce it on my uh, hall. I will put the, I will put it there. I will be at the Redland show uh, Thursday. I always say Thursday night at the premiere, but it's not Thursday night. I think it starts at, I don't know. I think it starts at 12 or 11, I'm not sure. But Thursday is premiere and um, I will be there Sunday just to stroll and have a good time and to speak to you guys and say hello because um, I know Thursdays are the days that they do uh, the entries for the for the orchids so if you guys want to enter anything at the show and you're local Thursday is the day to do it I am probably not going to be entering anything this time around I don't think I have anything that would be um, of, of show interest uh, I just have to look around I have to wait for that day but it's only what two weeks away so I don't really anticipate that. So I will be there Thursday and I will be there Sunday. Now, I know that um, I'm gonna have a couple of friends going uh, over there, so I'll be meeting them. So I can't wait, it's gonna be one of those get together uh, events, so. Now, I don't think I have any other shows that I can remember. It's kind of quiet now and you know what guys, I'm glad I need a little break. You know, we haven't stopped at all. You know, it's been show after show after show after show. And yes, it's great. I am very blessed to have that. You guys say it in my channel all the time that I'm super blessed that they, you wish you lived in an area. I, I am totally on board with that. But doing a channel, I pretty much go to all of them. So it gets to a point where it gets pricey. It gets, it's very time consuming. I do run a business, I run a ranch. So sometimes I even wonder how I do all these things successfully and i think you guys are part of my motivation to do this channel so i thank you so much i did mention on my last video that someone told me when you skip the ads uh, my channel doesn't get monetized i had no idea so if you guys don't mind just looking through the ads or just you can just ignore it if you want just let it play it's only what 30 seconds each one uh now if there's one of those ads that's like 30 minutes because i've seen those skip that puppy that's you're not there for that you're here for the blooms <laughs> <laughs> but you know it does help me greatly if uh, you just stick it out for those 30 seconds or one minute uh, it helps this channel get monetized and it helps me offset a lot of the expenses that I that I have when I go to these shows and especially the gasoline nowadays is very expensive and I do a lot of traveling which by the way I'll be in West Palm Beach on the end of April it's gonna be at the it's taken me a while to learn that one Mount Botanical Gardens in the Palm Beaches. And I looked at uh, online what it looks like and it looks like a great, great park. They're gonna have a plant fair and I've never been. It'll be my first, so I'm taking a little road trip, most likely with my sidekick, Teresita. And of course, I will be bringing you guys along. So I will end this channel today. Until next time, or should I say this episode, not the channel. Uh, I will end it for today and I will see you guys again, uh, maybe in a nursery visit um, that I'm planning to do at Martin's Nursery. If not, I'll see you at the park. So without, without further ado. <laughs> oh, Nelson, I have to slow it down. It was really nice talking to you guys. My name is Nelson. You've been watching Nature Nell and remember to always, always keep it green. See you next time. Come on, Boris. I need food in my stomach.
Oh my goodness, I feel so good. This is my little boys.